Hi, Heidi. I have something I want to ask you. Can you talk? Yeah, sure. Billy's sleeping, so I've got some time. What's on your mind? Well, you know how I've been having these weird incidents lately? Stuff keeps disappearing from my place, and it's starting to freak me out. Wait, what do you mean by disappearing? Are you saying you've been robbed? I'm not sure, but it feels that way. It started with small things, like a pen or a hairbrush, and I thought maybe I was being forgetful. But today, I discovered that four unopened bottles of shampoo have gone missing. It's getting really strange, and I can't ignore it anymore. Really? Wow, that's really bizarre. I can understand why you're concerned. What do you mean they've disappeared? Were you robbed? You think so too? This is like the third time this has happened. At first I thought I was imagining things, but this thing has made me rethink about all of them. And there must be someone to take responsibility for this. And I thought something has to be going on with you. Do you mean that shampoo? The shampoo you recommended the other day? The expensive one? Yeah. My hair and scalp have always been really sensitive, so I can't use regular shampoo that they sell at the drugstore. So I have to special order it, and it's pretty expensive. And it takes a couple of days to be delivered, so I don't know what to do. Ugh, that's awful. But why are you talking to me about it? Do you think I took it? That's not what I'm saying. I just wanted to ask if you can think of anyone. Oh, I see. Hmm, someone suspicious. Oh, what about her? The woman who moved here recently into that cheap apartment. The single mom? I think her name is Candace. She's only in her 30s, but she looks like she's 50. I heard she's been arrested before for sneaking into a people's apartments. So she's definitely suspicious. Whoa, slow down there, Heidi. Let's not jump to conclusions based on rumor and gossip. Yeah, I've heard some things about Candace. I don't have any first-hand knowledge or evidence to confirm them. It's all just hearsay, you know? But Linda, I'm telling you, it's true. Candace got divorced because of an affair, and she's actually paying alimony. And on top of that, she supposedly broke into her ex-husband's apartment out of anger. It's all over the grapevine. I understand that's what's being said, but we have to be careful about assuming the validity of these stories. We don't want to judge someone solely based on rumors, right? Besides, I've never even had a conversation with Candace, let alone invited her to my place. So I highly doubt my house is a potential target. Linda, you've got to be more cautious. These rumors might have some truth to them. I mean, think about it. If Candace is capable of breaking into her ex-husband's apartment, who knows what she's capable of doing? You don't want to be taken advantage of because of your trusting nature. Look, Heidi, I appreciate your concern. But let's not make assumptions based on speculation. It's important to get the facts straight before jumping to conclusions. As for my trusting nature, it's just who I am. I believe in giving people the benefit of the doubt until proven otherwise. Well, Linda, I just don't want you to end up losing more things because you're too trusting. It's better to be safe than sorry, you know? What you say seems reliable. But I tell you what, honestly, who knows if any of that is true? It could just be another rumor floating around. Yeah, that may be true. But you should actually take time to consider, just to be sure, okay? Yeah, exactly. It's hard to know what's real and what's simply people embellishing stories. I don't want to judge someone based on rumors alone. It's important to get the facts straight before jumping to conclusions. Absolutely! We don't want to become amateur detectives and start accusing people without solid evidence. But I have to admit, the rumors about Candace breaking into apartments do make her seem a bit suspicious, don't they? Yeah, I also have the same thought. Well, I just can't help thinking that she could be the suspect that we're looking for. I mean, she could absolutely have broken in when you weren't home. I mean, she has a record, huh? Maybe it's been happening to other people, they just don't know yet. Broken in, huh? But even if she broke in when I was at home, would she really only take shampoo? And other little random things and leave cash? Isn't that weird? 
I don't know what a thief thinks. Maybe she thought that you would notice if cash was missing, so she took little random things. I mean, I don't know, but I really think it might be her. Hmm, maybe I should just go to the police. Huh? The police? Yeah. They did only take shampoo and other small things, but it's creepy to think someone broke in. And the shampoo is special order, so it amounts to quite a bit of money. I was talking to my husband, and he thinks I should file a police report. Who knows, maybe they can get some fingerprints. Hey, are you seriously going to blow this out of proportion? I mean, come on, Linda. Are you sure you want to make such a big fuss? Am I sure? Seriously, Heidi, you always know how to question everything. Well, think about it, Linda. What if some bad rumors start spreading like wildfire when the police show up? People might jump to conclusions and think you've committed a crime or something. Imagine the chaos. And let's not forget how kids can be, especially with rumors. Your kid might have to deal with unnecessary bullying at school because of all these wild stories floating around. It's not cool, you know? You guys should handle this situation yourselves. Hmm, you have a point there. I didn't really consider the potential fallout. Maybe I should take it more seriously. What do you think I should do right now? Well, first you should calm down a little bit. Then you can consider talking to the other moms. That would certainly be much better. And I'll try to help you in any way I can. Okay, I'll do that. Thanks, Heidi. Hey, John, are you done with work? About the shampoo thing... I just asked some friends about it. Okay, and? Was there anyone suspicious? Well, I guess Heidi is the most suspicious. Whenever she comes over, she always goes to the bathroom like three or four times. And she never puts her huge purse down. So I think she's pretending to go to the bathroom so she can steal the shampoo. But I can't accuse her without any proof. OMG, are you really sure about that? Do you think she's to blame? That would be surprising. She is my younger sister. She can't do things like this. She's been living with us for more than three months now. I don't want to blame her for something she doesn't do. It would be a really serious mistake. You know what I mean, right? Of course, I understand that. But my personal stuff is disappearing one by one. And the only suspect I am thinking about is Heidi. These are all women's stuff, like shampoo, soap, and even my towel. You will never steal that, will you? It's as clear as day. I'll never do such a stupid thing like that. I understand you're frustrated, Linda, but jumping to conclusions without any solid proof might not be the best approach. We need to be careful with how we handle the situation. You're right. It's just that the evidence seems to point to Heidi. I mean, seven bottles of shampoo, that's a significant amount, and they're not cheap either. You don't know this, but I must have lost a couple hundred dollars because of these things. I get it. It's frustrating to see your hard-earned money disappear like that. But let's remember, there could be other explanations for the missing shampoo. Maybe there's a chance that Heidi isn't involved at all. I suppose you're right, John. We shouldn't jump to conclusions without considering all possibilities. It's just hard to ignore the facts. Do you have any idea about this? I'm getting mixed up already. I think we should resort to calling the police. I mean, even if Heidi isn't the one taking the shampoo, it's still a serious matter that should be looked into by the police. I agree, John. It's important to consider all angles. But I'm still feeling a little bit concerned here. What's that? Is that about her son? If Heidi really is a thief and she gets arrested, I can't help but feel bad for her child, Billy. He shouldn't have to suffer the consequences of his mother's actions. That's a valid point. I didn't think about the impact this could have on Billy. As her older brother, I do feel a sense of responsibility towards Heidi. It would be terrible if people started calling Billy a thief's son because of this situation. And Heidi's a single mom, so I feel that her life is quite miserable. Doing that to her, without even thinking, may be quite harsh. Exactly, John. We have to take into account the potential consequences for Heidi's family. 
We shouldn't rush to involve the police without considering the impact it could have on her and Billy. It's a delicate situation, and we need to handle it carefully. I love Billy. He's a nice child, and I don't want anything bad to happen to him. Yeah, I understand that. So what idea are you having on your mind? I'm curious to hear. Well, I have this idea, but this might be quite harsh on your little sister. Well, but it will definitely teach her a lesson of respecting others' stuff. But what is it in particular? I'm quite eager to hear it. Well, John, I've come up with a little plan. I'm going to put something special in a decoy bottle and leave it in the storage space. It's sort of like bait, you know? If anyone tries to steal it again, we might have some clues about who the real thief is. Ah, I see what you're getting at, Linda. So you're setting up a trap to catch the culprit in action. That could be interesting. But what exactly are you planning to do with this trap? Don't worry, John. I'll handle it. I'm going to discreetly mark the decoy bottle and maybe even rig it with something that will leave a trace. If someone takes it, we might be able to gather some evidence or at least have a lead to follow. It's a bit of a covert operation, but I think it's worth a shot. That sounds intriguing, Linda. I'm curious about the details, but I trust your judgment on this. Just make sure you're careful and take the necessary precautions. I don't want you to get into any trouble. You know how much I value your safety, right? Absolutely. Your concern means a lot to me. I'll be extra cautious and make sure everything is set up properly. I don't want to put myself at risk either, so you can count on me to handle it responsibly. That's reassuring to hear, Linda. I know you're resourceful and capable, so I believe in your ability to handle the situation. If this trap can help us uncover the truth and find the real thief, then it's definitely worth a try. Just keep me updated on any developments, okay? Of course, John. I'll give you all the details once I get home and set everything up. We'll be one step closer to solving this mystery, and hopefully, we can put an end to these missing shampoo bottles once and for all. You can rely on me to take care of it. I'll always be on your side during this whole ordeal. Together, we'll get to the bottom of this and hopefully recover your lost items. Sure thing. I'll tell you when I get home, okay? Okay, that's good. I'm looking forward to your news. Hey, Linda! What is happening to my hair? I knew it! I knew you were the one stealing my shampoo! What is going on? It's different than usual! So everything's clear right now. It was you! What the hell are you talking about? You see, I suspected someone was stealing my shampoo, so I decided to set a trap. And it turns out, the trap led me straight to you. What? Stealing your shampoo? Linda, I have no idea what you're talking about. I've never taken anything from you. Oh, come on, Heidi. Don't play innocent. This isn't the first time bottles of shampoo have mysteriously disappeared, and now I have proof. I knew it was you all along, so I put hair removal cream in that bottle. What? Hair removal cream? My husband uses it for his back. I put it in a shampoo bottle. So you tricked me into this? Something must have gone wrong. I'm your sister-in-law, and you think I'm a thief? I can't believe it! How could you be so heartless to your husband's sister? You're such a crooked person! I don't even understand why my brother married you! Ugh, so tell me. Why do I have to believe your lies? And the evidence is crystal clear now. It's your hair. That's no accident, Heidi. I put it in there to catch the thief, and it seems like it worked. You can't deny it. If you hadn't stolen my shampoo bottle, you'd never have been in this situation. You're also as sly as a fox. Are you serious, Linda? I would never sabotage your shampoo like that. I have no reason to do something so hurtful. There must be some kind of mix-up or misunderstanding. Mix-up? Misunderstanding? Heidi, this isn't a coincidence. I specifically chose that bottle because I suspected you. And now, it seems like my suspicions were right. You've been caught red-handed. That's awful! Why would you do something like that? Excuse me? Why did you steal my shampoo? I told you I was looking for the thief. But you still stole three more bottles, didn't you? Shut up! It's your fault! Showing off your expensive shampoo like you're rich? 
I know you looked down on me because I can't buy expensive beauty products. I hate that about you. So I took your shampoo. You're rich, right? What does it matter if you're missing two or three bottles of shampoo? But no, you go screaming about a thief. Even going as far as to set up a trap. I wasn't showing it off. I really like it, so I was just recommending it. And just to let you know, I'm not rich. If only I could, I would buy something more affordable. But if I use regular shampoo, I get really bad dandruff and split ends. I have no choice but to use something expensive. And it's not about losing two or three bottles. Just not having one bottle is really damaging to me. Whatever! I wish I had that problem. That's why I hate rich people. I told you, I'm not rich. Will you listen to me? Are you stupid? I'm not stupid. What are you going to do about this? My hair is falling out. I can't go outside looking like this. I can't do anything about that. You're the one who put hair removal cream on your head. I had nothing to do with it. It's your fault. You switched shampoo with hair removal cream. My hair is ruined. I'm gonna get you for this. I'm gonna sue you for $100,000. You shouldn't be so cavalier about this. I just gave a shampoo bottle to my husband and he put hair removal cream in there so he could use it. How was that a crime? Isn't it your fault for thinking it was regular shampoo and stealing it? No, it's all your fault. I did nothing wrong. Um, do you think you can get whatever you want if you scream and threaten people? If you sincerely apologized, I was going to let this all go. But if you're gonna dig in like this, I have no choice but to go to the police. I'm going to report you. What? The police? You're going to report me? Yeah, I'm gonna report you. Let's let the courts decide who's in the wrong. You or me. If you're taken into custody, you won't get to see your son for a while. But be strong. No! Wait! To have your own mother be arrested. I feel bad for your son. He might be cast aside, too. I didn't want that to happen, so I tried to do this without involving the police. But if this is how you're going to be, I don't really have a choice. I'm going to the police tomorrow. Wait! You just wait a second! I mean, please, wait! What? Please, don't go to the police. My son has nothing to do with this. Ugh, Heidi, I get it. Your son might not be directly involved, but once the police get involved, things can spiral out of control. I can't control what everyone else thinks once you're arrested. It pains me, but it's out of my hands. The law will have to take its course. You love my son, right? So please, could you give me a little mercy so that we could live peacefully with each other? Otherwise, my son will feel really embarrassed to have a thief as a mother. You understand that, don't you? What? So now you're using your son as an excuse for your stupid attitude? How could you be that pathetic? That's unbelievable. Poor little Billy. He's too innocent to be aware of how serious this is getting. Wait, Linda. I'm really sorry. I didn't mean for any of this to happen. I'll make things right. I promise. I'll give you back everything I took. I'll pay you back for the stuff I used. And I'll even come to your house to apologize in person. Just please, please, don't go to the police. Oh, now you're sorry? It's a little too late for that. You've caused so much trouble and inconvenience. There is no way to turn back now. The bitter fact is that you've broken our trust and put me in a difficult position. So this is the consequence that you will have to accept. Linda, I know I messed up, and I'm genuinely sorry. I didn't think about the consequences of my actions, and I regret it. I'm willing to do whatever it takes to make things right. I'll give you back everything, so could you give me a way out? Please, give me a chance to rectify this situation before involving the authorities. I promise I'll learn from this mistake. Oh wow, Heidi. Your reaction is just priceless. You think returning everything you took and compensating me will make up for what you've done? How naive can you be? 
Your lack of consideration has caused so much stress and frustration that no amount of property or money could ever truly make amends. And guess what? I couldn't resist sharing the news with John. Oh, he was furious, Heidi. Absolutely furious. He couldn't believe that his own sister was a greedy thief. Can you imagine the disappointment and embarrassment he felt? So, he made the decision to kick you out of this house. It's a shame, really, how things have turned out, especially with the baby involved. But hey, you just have to accept the consequences of your actions. Wait, what? You actually went and told John everything? Oh my god, Linda! You have the audacity to do something so heartless. You're truly the most cruel person I know. How could you betray me like that? I thought we were good friends, but clearly I was mistaken. Oh, spare me the drama, Heidi. You're the one who betrayed our friendship when you decided to steal from me. I have no sympathy for someone who shows such a lack of integrity. You brought this upon yourself, and now you have to face the consequences. I can't believe this, Linda. I never expected you to stoop so low. Yes, I made a mistake, but that doesn't justify your actions. You didn't have to involve John and make matters worse. We could have resolved this between us, but you chose to escalate it and cause even more pain. Resolved it between us? Oh, Heidi, you're living in a fantasy world. I couldn't just let you off the hook easily. Your actions needed to have consequences, and I felt it was necessary to involve John. He deserved to know the truth, especially since you've tarnished our family's name with your selfishness. I never wanted to tarnish our family's name. I made a mistake, and I was ready to make amends. But now, you've taken it to a whole new level. You've not only ruined our friendship, but you've also caused a rift in our family. Is that what you wanted? To see me suffer and be kicked out? Oh, don't play the victim, Heidi. You brought this upon yourself. Your actions have consequences, and it's time you face them. I didn't want to see you suffer, but I couldn't just let you off the hook without any repercussions. Maybe now you'll learn the importance of integrity and the impact your choices can have on others. No, I don't want to be thrown out of this house like a dog like this. Please, sis, could you please convince John to let me live in this house with you? We would certainly get back together and live like a happy family, right? Sis? <laughs> I'm getting scared. Your two-faced attitude is disgusting, I have to say. Well, I didn't want to argue with Heidi any longer, so I hung up immediately. Three days later, John told me that Heidi came to find him and begged him several times to let her stay in the house, but he rejected it right away. Therefore, she had no choice but to pack her stuff and get out of the house. Well, her hair was still falling out so much that she had to go to the hospital to receive treatment. And the cost for that was not cheap at all. But that's what she had to suffer for stealing my stuff. What's worse is that later on, after collecting all the necessary proof, I reported all of Heidi's crimes to the police. And of course, she had to pay a harsh price by receiving a three-year prison sentence. Well, three years seemed not so long but maybe it would be enough for her to consider all the things she's done to me. About me, even though I hated Heidi, I loved her son. So I told my husband to adopt him as our own child until Heidi came back from prison. He's a nice child, and he should receive the love from a proper family. Everything's happening really peacefully to us, and I truly hope that it can be just like that in the future.